Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here, playing some more Warhammer Combat Cards Ranked Mode. Recently, I've mainly just been focusing on uploading videos covering the special campaigns and explorations, but I'd also like to showcase a few of the decks that I'm using in Ranked Mode. It's been quite a while since I've done that, and uh, since the last ones that I uploaded, I think I've leveled up a lot of my cards to a much higher level. I've got quite a few legendaries now at level 5 and a few at level 6. And I'd also like to talk a little bit about some of the changes, the, the balance changes that have been made. So, uh, for this video, I'm going to be running Zephyrblade, the ranged Eldari Warlord, who I have at level 8. And uh, with this deck, I've got the Crimson Hunter Exarch at level 5. Deals quite a bit of damage. It's actually the most powerful ranged unit that the Eldari have. 122 ranged here at level 5. The Warwalker got a significant buff this season, and I actually was using it before it got buffed, just because the Scout is, is a pretty powerful ability, but yeah, it, it deals a lot more damage and has more health now, so definitely a great option. The Wraithlord went through an interesting change. It used to have Death Blow, which was pretty useless if you wanted to use it with a lot of the Eldari Warlords, except for Blade included, but now it has Regeneration, so it's a lot more tanky. Uh, which is one of the things that a lot of Eldari are lacking, is just health, so we'll see how this goes. And then Malganra is just fun, lots of burst damage, and then I've got a bunch of fodder. Two Barrage units, the, the Corsair Reaver, which is basically the same as the Dark Reaper Exarch, except the Corsair, you can see, actually has better stats. And then we've got the Scourge with uh, another outflank, and then the Dire Avenger with Precision Shot. So, we'll go ahead and deploy and see how this goes. Eldari are currently at the top of my factions in Ranked. It's still pretty early in the season. Alright, so we're up against Watch Captain Artemis running 8 bodyguards. So this should be a fairly challenging battle. I think it looks like these cards are at a decent level. They also have the initiative, amazingly. The Wraith Lord is slowing down this deck. So in the past, Zephyr Blade was always going first, but against Artemis, you definitely want to deploy the weaker units first, so that they can take uh, the brunt of the damage. It's uh, His special rule does 20% of the starting health, so I'm just going to drop some weak guys. Hopefully they don't have a lot of shields. Drop in the uh, barrage here at the beginning. And they got Medicaid, which actually, if they go Psychic, will... Now this guy can debuff ranged, so that's going to be wonderful. Um, Alright, well, I guess we'll drop the um, Wraith Lord at the beginning, see what happens. I think we'll be able to start tanking damage early. Oh, actually, what am I thinking? That Wraith Lord is going to take so much damage from uh, the special rule, but... Yeah, this is not going to be a very great first turn. That was a pretty terrible initial deployment. So only 93 damage. And yeah, with the extra healing, it's going to take a while to get through these guys, especially with the, the ranged debuff. So pretty slow start to this match. Now they are going melee, which allows the Wraith Lord to counterattack at least. It's actually a lot of damage, more than I was expecting. Okay, time to start doing some damage here. We're going to drop the Crimson Hunter. Go for an outflank, and then take out their Psyker. Uh, but that does mean that um, the next card they deploy could potentially do a lot of damage. It's either going to kill the Dire Avenger, or deal a lot of damage to one of my bigger vehicles here. And it is another Psyker, Castellan Crow. 58 damage, wow. That was pretty painful. I really need to take out that Apothecary. Keeps debuffing me. But so far, it's a, it's a pretty even match. A lot of the matches I record end up being very one-sided, which makes for just less interesting content, I feel like. So hopefully this will be a close match that we won't know who will win until the very end. Alright, here comes the next one. An Ancient. So that's double Inspiring Presence. It doesn't stack, so not very effective there, but the Special rule does take out the Dire Avenger. Here comes a big melee attack. Alright. 
Now we should be able to pretty much clear the board here, but that will open up my side to a lot of damage. They're probably going to clear my board. It's just going to go back and forth here. So I'll, I think I'll just drop down the um, the Scourge. Let's see, this thing does 56. Scourge does 55. We'll see if that's enough with the outflank to actually destroy everything. I don't know. I almost think that it might be better to leave something alive so we're not taking so much damage at once from... Uh, the special rule, but too late. Everything dies, so they get to deploy three things in a row, dealing a whole lot of damage. We'll see what their final three bodyguards are, and we'll see if we have enough to actually get through it as well. Outflank there. Uh, that Assault Marine is not very strong, but it uh, looks like they're going psychic here, so they've got fear as well with the chaplain. And then you now Stormcaller, the special rule, takes out the Wraith Lord before we get a chance to even start the turn. And they're going for the Psychic Attack. Actually, I, th I feel like going melee would have been better there, because they could have cleared everything. Leaving that Crimson Hunter alive, not such a good idea. All right. Uh, let's go with the Warwalker, with the Scout. I'm not sure if I actually have enough to kill uh, Nail Stormcaller, though. He's at level six, so he has a ton of health. Now this thing, 149. How much does this guy do? 113. Hmm. All right, well, we'll go with Malgan Ra in the center. See what happens there. 68 damage. He's going to do quite a bit. Oh, he does have enough. Okay, that was actually very fortunate. So, nice drop there. Able to clear out their big Psyker who would have been able to kill the Crimson Hunter just with the Signing Blast on the next turn, so... Pretty solid there. Watch Captain Artemis deploying, dealing 33 damage to Malgan Rod. Not too much, and he has Big Game Hunter. Lots of melee here, but... Not enough to get through my forces. And then we can just finish him off with a big ranged counterattack. So that worked out pretty nicely at the end there. With Watch Captain Artemis, a lot of it comes down to kind of the luck of where the special rules damage goes so I ended up losing the Wraith Lord uh, pretty early but I I think I like this this build it's a pretty fun one and it might be better to add even more defense because I think that's the main weakness of the Zephyr Blade is that uh, the ranged units tend to be too squishy and then they just don't do so well earlier I played a match against Canis Viridian and just got stomped into the ground uh, the, the enemy deck just did a lot better job of absorbing damage through taunt and shields. And this deck just wasn't able to to deal with that. But still, uh, for just getting through matches pretty quickly, uh, at the lower stages of rank, this is a pretty solid build. So uh, I'd like to upload more videos like this in the future, just showcasing some of my favorite units. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.